Hey everyone, this is Mostly Casual Commander, where we do our best to keep our games of Commander fun without sacrificing our ability to win. I'm BK, and today I have an exciting new game of Commander for you. Our four commanders for this match are Hinata, Don Crowned, Satoru Umezawa, Tatsunari, Toad Rider, and Ishin, Two Heavens is One. We are just a group of friends trying to have fun playing our favorite game bunch of average players, so if you're looking for expert plays or optimized deck lists, you're probably not going to find them here. So if this is the kind of content that you're interested in, we would love to have you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and like the content that you've been enjoying. We are super excited for these four new commanders from the Kamigawa set, and we really hope you guys enjoy the game, and look forward to our future matches featuring more Kamigawa commanders too. We also thought it was fitting to showcase this beautiful Tori Gate that Ezreal brought home from Japan after his visit there. So let's kick off the game, and BK starts us off with the Temple of Enlightenment, so we'll have him scry one, and he puts it to the bottom. He passes turn over to Busterkins, who plays Morphic Pool, which will come in untapped, and then he says go. Ezreal draws for turn and plays a beautiful new Kamigawa Swamp, and over to Kyle, he also drops a beautiful new Kamigawa Swamp. Back to my turn, starting turn 2. I play an island as my land for turn, and cast Mind Stone, which will ramp me, but I can also draw a card off of it later. Over to Busterkin's turn, he draws and plays Exotic Orchard as his land for turn. Then he casts Thousand Faced Shadow, a 1-1 flyer that can ninjutsu out and make copies of non-legendary creatures. Exotic Orchard hits the battlefield for Azrael. He says go, back over to Kyle who has a Rugged Prairie hit the battlefield. On to BK's turn in turn 3, Storm Carved Coast enters the battlefield on his side of the board. Smothering Tithe is the follow-up play, looking to make a bunch of treasures every time an opponent draws a card. Pay my tax. And he does not, so I get a treasure token. Island hits the battlefield on Busterkin's board. He casts his commander, Satoru Umazawa. This will allow him to basically anticipate every time he ninjutsu something out. One point of damage is dealt to Kyle. And he passes it over to Ezreal. Ezreal draws and does not pay, so I get another treasure. And then Undergrowth Stadium is his land for turn, followed up by a Cultivate with beautiful JP art. He finds an island which hits the battlefield, and then a forest goes to his hand. Over to Kyle. He draws, giving me another treasure, and he drops a Plains as his land for turn. And his follow-up is Dockside Extortionist, who nets him five whole treasures. He then uses those treasures to cast Krenko, Tin Street Kingpin, which will get bigger and provide goblins onto the battlefield, plus a Hanweir Garrison, which every time it attacks, it'll give him two human creature tokens attacking. On to BK's turn, Command Tower enters my battlefield, and then I cast Kaikar, Wind's Fury, which will not only allow me to produce 1-1 one, one Spirit, but I could also sack them for mana. On to Busterkin's turn, I net another treasure, and then he drops Choked Estuary, revealing an island from his hand. He then moves to combat at Ezreal and Kyle, and because no blocks are declared, he ninjutsus out a Void Winnower on turn 4. This triggers his commander and prevents people from casting or blocking with anything with an even mana value. On to Ezreal's turn, he plays Twilight Mire as his land, and then he casts Crux of Fate. So he destroys all non-dragon creatures and passes over to Kyle. Kyle draws for turn and gives me another treasure. He then plays another Swamp, and with that he casts Brutal Horde Chief. This thing can start draining out your opponents whenever you attack, and you could also force blocks from your opponent as well. On to BK's turn, I play an Island as my land, and follow that up with a Metallurgic Summonings, which will start producing me some Construct Tokens, and then I cast my commander, Hinata Dawn Crowned. Hinata reduces the cost of my spells that target things, and tax my opponent's spells that target things. On to Busterkin's turn, he drops an island as his land, then he casts Thousand Faced Shadow again. He wants to make sure he can ninjutsu out something very easily each turn if possible. He casts Preordain, log into Scry 2, and then he draws a card. I net another treasure off of his draw. After I make an additional treasure, he casts Ornithopter, another juicy ninjutsu target. It's a great creature that you can recast for nothing after you bounce it back to your hand. Scroll Rack enters his side of the battlefield, allowing him to swap his hand with cards on top of his library. Onto Azrael's turn, BK makes another treasure, 
and a forest hits the battlefield. He then casts his commander, Tatsunari Toad Rider. This can make it so his frog creatures can't be blocked. Or when he casts an enchantment spell, like Grim Guardian, it'll trigger and make Kemi. Not sure if I pronounced his name right, but he's a frog that can drain out opponents when he casts enchantments, much like Grim Guardian. Over to Kyle, he draws and lets BK get another treasure off a of Smothering Tithe. He then plays his own exotic orchard as his land for turn, followed by Timna the Weaver. This will allow him to pay life in exchange for cards after combat. He attacks with Brutal Horde Chief, draining Busterkin's one, and then dealing three more damage to him, dropping him to 35. He pays one life, draws an additional card, and then decides whether or not he's going to give BK another treasure, and this time he taps and says no, and BK's very, very sad. On Kyle's end step, I cast a reduced cost generous gift, and maintaining priority, I then cast Dual Caster Mage. This will copy my generous gift, and also trigger my metallurgic summonings, which gives me a 3-3 construct from seeing the first generous gift. I blow up Timna the Weaver and Tatsunari Toad Rider, and they both get 3-3 elephants from it. On my turn, I want to draw again, so I sack my Mind Stone, and then I drop Steam Vents untapped. Over to combat, I swing Hinata at Azrael, and pass the turn over to Busterkins. He gives me another treasure, drops an island, there's his land for turn, and moves to combat against me, he ninjutsus out Ninja of the Deep Hours on his Ornithopter, bouncing it back to his hand. And he ninjutsus out Sakashima Student, making it a copy of Hinata Dawn Crowned. So now our two Hinatas basically cancel each other, but the other opponents have to pay additionally for each targeted thing. After that, he recasts Thousand Face Shadow and his Ornithopter. Then he passes the turn over to Ezrael. He draws and he casts Binding of the Old Gods. When it ETBs, it'll destroy a permanent, which in this case is my Smothering Tithe. It's also triggered his two Drainers and dropped us down a little bit more life. Draina, the last Blood Chief, enters Kyle's battlefield. Whenever it attacks, it can return a non-legendary creature to his battlefield. He moves to combat, and this triggers his Brutal Horde Chief, and he deals some more damage at Busterkins. I cast Sword to Plowshares on Busterkins copied Hinata. This triggers Metallurgic Summonings, and in response he activates his Scroll Rack looking for an answer to keep his Hinata around. He does not find one, so that STP resolves, gaining him some life, and removing that second Hinata from the board, because I don't want more Hinatas. Stormkiln Artist is cast for BK. This will not only produce some more treasures, but will get bigger and swoller whenever I have more artifacts. On the combat, I pick on Azrael again, dropping him to 31. On to Busterkin's turn. First thing he does is activate Scroll Rack, looking for some additional things to ninjutsu out, I imagine. He then casts Satoru Umezawa again, his commander. Then with that on the battlefield, he moves to combat, swinging Thousand Faced Shadow at Ezreal and dealing one point of damage. After Ezreal draws, binding the Old God's triggers, so he finds a Zagoth Triome with its ability to find a forest. Imprisoned in the Moon is cast, and he targets my Hinata. I don't like that, so I cast Brainstorm in response. This triggers Storm Kill Nardist and Metallurgic Summonings. I'm looking for an answer, like a counterspell, and don't find one. So Imprisoned in the Moon, we'll go ahead and resolve. Yeah, mm -hmm. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Hey, you get a colorless land, right? That's yeah, we're good. I ramped you. Thank you for the ramp, Azriel. Also, I'm just kidding, I was not at all salty. So he does drain us a couple more points before he casts Shimmering Wings, which also drains his opponents again. He attached Shimmering Wings to his Elephant, and it can also be bounced back to his hand at instant speed. Kyle casts his Commander, Ishin to Heavens is 1. Ishin doubles all of the combat triggers that happen whenever he attacks. So he moves to combat, Draina triggers twice. Azrael, the defending player, will select two non-legendary creatures for him to reanimate. And so the only two targets available are Dockside and Hanweir. So they re-enter the battlefield. They each get a plus one plus one counter in our vampire. And also he gets a measly 16 treasures. Triggers from Brutal Horde Chief will drain a total of four life from Azrael because he has two attacking creatures. And then this. So four blocks. I'm going pay mana. Force blocks. Okay. Just five mana. Creatures your bones control. Okay. Block this turn if able and choose how they block. So we will throw your flying elephant in front of Drana. <sighs> And we will throw you not commander commander in front of the elephant. Okay. So they're actually both forced to block because it forces everything. But I choose how they block. But I guess I'll okay. make them both bl double block the elephant. Yeah. And then I'll assign damage here and here. Yeah. 
After combat damage resolves, they clean up their board states a little bit, and then Kyle casts Legion War Boss as his follow-up play. This will get him a 1-1 Goblin at the start of his combat step, and then he secures some more mana by casting Talisman of Conviction. And following that, he passes over to BK. I draw, and I see his Talisman by casting my own Talisman, and it'll also make Stormkiln a little bigger. How's that uh, colorless land you got over there treating you? Real good. Exile Metallurgic Summons. Return all my instants and sorceries to my hand. Oh, that's pretty good. So even though I liked making constructs, I would much rather have Brainstorm, Swords to Plowshares, and Generous Gift returned to my hand. I use Generous Gift to blow up the Imprisoned in the Moon so that I can recover my commander, Hinata, Dawn Crowned, onto the battlefield. Because it doesn't have Summoning Sickness, because it's already been out, I move to combat and I smack Azrael, dropping him down to 24. Over to Busterkins, on his turn he activates his Scroll Rack again, he digs for two, and he finds an island, drops it onto the battlefield as his land for turn. Combat over to BK. After I declare no blocks, he ninjutsus out Jinga Taxis Core Augur. This Praetor will fill up his hand on his end step and make his opponents lose their hands on their end step. He also got an Anticipate trigger off of Satoru. Then he recasts Thousand Face Shadow, and in response to that, hitting the stack, I cast Swords to Plowshares on Jinga Taxis. This not only triggers Stormkiln again, getting me another treasure, but it exiles his big scary thing. After Ezreal draws for turn, binding the old god's triggers, giving his creatures death touch until end of turn. He then casts Honden of Night's Reach. This triggers his grim guardian, and it will also start making his opponents discard things. Dryad of the Elysian Grove also hits his battlefield, draining us yet again. Then he moves to Kyle's turn. Kyle casts Cathar's Crusade. So whenever a creature enters a battlefield under his control, each creature gets plus one plus one counter. I respond to this by casting Brainstorm, hoping to find a counter or some sort of thing to deal with it. Uh, unfortunately, I do not. So it resolves. He then moves to his combat step. This triggers Legion Warboss, giving him a 1-1 Goblin, also triggering Cathar's Crusade. So all of his creatures get a plus one plus one counter. He then declares his attacks, attacking Ezreal and BK. His multiple triggers take place here. First, he gets four human tokens. And guess what? This triggers Cathar's Crusade again, four times. So all of his creatures get massively swole and huge. And quite frankly, that escalated very quickly. So once he's finished putting all of his plus one plus one counters on all of his creatures, his Brutal Horde Chief triggers and drains Azrael a total of 12 and BK a total of 10. So I think we might have miscounted when we were playing the game, so our life totals are slightly off, but it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Then I will force everything you own yep. to block this counter. So all my creatures had to block his single goblin, and this knocks both myself and Ezreal out of the game after this massive combat step. Over to Busterkin's turn. He casts Baleful Strix. When it ETBs, he gets to draw a card. He's searching for an answer to Kyle's incredible board state. Instead, he found a soul ring, so that's not exactly a board wipe, but it is extra mana, which is always nice. On to combat. He swings at Kyle with all of his available creatures, and then he ninjutsus out Yuriko, the tiger's shadow. Then this triggers his commander, Satoru Umazawa, so he gets to quote-unquote anticipate. He'll look at the top three, put one of his into his hand, and then put the other two on the bottom of his library. Combat damage resolves, so Ninja of the Deep Hours will allow him to draw one card. Then Yuriko triggers and reveals four cards off the top of his library. Unfortunately, this only nets him four more points of damage. But with those additional cards, he goes digging with Scroll Rack. Please don't tap it opposite like yeah, that. In, the the <laughs> in front of national television. <laughs> and using Scroll Rack, he switches eight cards from his hand to the top of his library. Uh, sadly, there's not many two mana answers for that kind of board state, so he has to pass the turn over to Kyle. On his combat step, which he just goes immediately into, he produces another goblin off of Legion War Boss. Everything gets counters. He gets all the triggers when he attacks. He gets more humans, he gets all the Draina triggers, but they don't matter. He also gets all the Brutal Horde Chief triggers for a total of 30, dropping Busterkins to 2, and eventually just killing him with the combat damage. Congratulations Kyle on a job well done. What a very impressive Ishin deck. So please let us know what you think. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you very much for watching.